Hello, welcome to our video channel. My name is Odette Hadas, and today's video will be Introduction to GPON. So before we talk about GPON, let's talk about PON in general. PON is a network topology which has been around for many years. Um, it is characterized by the following topology. Uh, you have a unit, an active unit, and the service provider's point of presence, usually the, the central office. It's called the OLT, optical line termination. There are passive, sorry, active units at uh, the customer's end. They are called ONUs or ONTs, optical network unit or optical network termination. Uh, and all the network in the middle between these two ends is passive. And there's a single fiber going from the OLT. It is split usually multiple times. Every splitter is a power of two, so it's split to two or four or eight. And then at the end, you'd have something like 32 or 64 or sometimes even 128 ONUs. Uh, the main advantage of this topology is that the whole network, other than the units at the end, is passive. So it means higher, like, higher reliability, higher availability, lower energy consumption. And for this reason, uh, PON has widely been adopted as a topology for delivering of services over PON to residential and sometimes also to business customers. Now, talking specifically about GPON, GPON is a TDMA PON. I will talk about TDMA in a few minutes, which means the full requirements that were set up by FSUN, Full Service Access Network Group, uh, some years ago. It supports asymmetric line rate of about 2.5 gigabit per second, 1.25 gigabit per second upstream, downstream and upstream. It uses two separate wave lengths, 1490 for downstream and 1310 for upstream. And the fact that it uses two wavelengths allows it to use it to use a single fiber for both directions. Uh, unlike some other technologies which use the fiber for downstream and the fiber for upstream. Uh, there's also an option for an RF video overlay. Uh, a specific wavelength has been dedicated for this, the 1550 nanometers. Uh, the idea here is to preserve the analog TV channels, uh, which use the fiber infrastructure for delivery. Other than using the same fiber, it has nothing to do with GPON. So it doesn't use the GPON protocol, uh, unlike IPTV, which we'll talk about in one of our other videos, which uses GPON to deliver TV. As we said in the previous one, uh, in the previous slide, up to 128 ONUs can be supported, uh, although 32 or 64 is more typical. The optical budget, which is the difference between the transmitting level on one end and the receiving sensitivity at the other end, is 28 dB. And this translates to 20 kilometers reach with a 1 to 32 split ratio. If you split more, you lose some power, so the reach would be lower. Um, but these numbers are benchmark numbers that show you about the possible reach with GPON. Uh, GPON was first standardized in 2003-2004. ITU is the body in charge of GPON. Uh, the current standards are, are from 2014. Uh, there was a major overhaul in 2008 where some of the early specifications were deprecated and changed and modified. Um, today's standard is, is more or less similar to that of 2008, though there have been, there have been some amendments and enhancements. Uh, down here, we can see the different wavelengths. We have the 1310 with a certain tolerance for the upstream, the 1490 for the downstream, the enhancement analog RF overlay, 1550, and some, some bands which were specified when GPON was standardized as future. Today, they've already been used for newer technologies. In terms of deployment uh, scenarios, GPON can be deployed in several modes. It can be fiber to the home, where the ONU or ONT is located inside the home. Fiber to the building. Uh, this is sometimes also called MDU or MTU, where you have uh, it's a multi-dwelling unit or multi-tenant unit. You have an ONU in a building, usually in the basement, and then copper or some other media like coax is used to distribute the service inside the building. And fiber to the curb, or sometimes fiber to the cabinet, FTC, uh, where the fiber goes to an ONU in an outdoor cabinet, and from there, copper is used to distribute the services. 
Uh, there's also a new term called fiber to the distribution point, FTTDP. Uh, and this can be either fiber to the building or fiber to the curb. There are some different characteristics of the distribution point. Usually it's located close to the customers. This is beyond the scope, the scope of today's video. Uh, let's get familiar with some terms of GBON. The first one is TCON, traffic container. Traffic container is actually a grouping of logical connections for the purpose of upstream bandwidth assignment. We'll talk about TDMA and then you'll understand how this fits in. Um, there's also a broader form of recommendation called TR-156, a broader form specification called TR-156, uh, which defines it as a traffic bearing object within an ONU that represents a group of logical connections. Uh, what's important is that it's treated as a single entity for the purpose of upstream bandwidth assignment. Now, since the bandwidth is assigned by an OLT to a TCON, this is the element which is associated with the quality of service. Uh, the GPON standard ITUT G984.3 defines five types of TCONs. And this allows the OLT to manage the bandwidth accordingly uh, to different uh, TCONs for different quality of service types fixed, assured, assured and non-assured, best effort, and so on. Now let's talk about uh, TDMA. And TDMA is actually the way the OLT controls that transmission from the ONUs. Now, as, is, as we presented, the network actually has a shared fiber going from the OLT to the first splitter. Sometimes there are also shared fibers that are shared among a smaller number of ONUs. Now, since all the ONUs, when transmitting the upstream, use the same media, this is a shared media, uh, you must control uh, the time slots. You must control these transmissions to uh, avoid collisions. So this is done by time slots. This is actually the meaning of time division multiple access. The OLT assigns time slots. They're called BW maps for every ONU to transmit. And every BW map includes the TCONT. So um, every ONU is it has an ID which is assigned by the OLT. It has a default TCONT with the same ID, and then it may have additional TCONTs depending on the service requirements. So as an example, ONU1 has TCONT1, ONU3 has TCONT3, and they also have TCONT1001 in this example, 3001 in this example, ONU2, it's not shown here, but also has a TCONT2. Now, when the OLT assigns the time slot, it will tell ONU1, you start transmitting, but this transmission is associated with TCONT1, and you start transmitting here. This is the packet marked as A. Stop transmitting here. Uh, then, as an example, ONU2 with packet B starts here, ends here. Uh, then there can be ONU3 with C, and then the second TCONT of ONU3. Uh, this is assigned separately, so every TCONT has separate assignments. And then there could be a separate assignment. There could be a gap in the middle. Now, this ensures that all the transmissions are aligned and uh, there are no collisions. Um, the fact that bandwidth can be different for every TCONT, and this can be dynamic, uh, allows the OLT to give quality of service and uh, to optimize the resource allocations. Um, Another term I would like to mention uh, and should be familiar with if you're dealing with GPON is GEM, GPON encapsulation method. GEM is actually a method for encapsulating the user frame data for transport over GPON. All the user frames are transported over Ethernet. Uh, and this includes the data, includes voice, includes video. Uh, and GEM ports represent the logical connections that are shows associated with specific traffic flows. So if you have different traffic streams, different Ethernet traffic streams uh, that represent different services or represent different customers within a building that all have the same ONU, they would all have, each would have a different GEM port. Now the hierarchy is shown here. There's a PON which has ONUs. Each ONU has a TCONT, at least one, sometimes more. And the TCON may have one or more gem ports associated with it. Now, if the gem ports are associated with the same TCON, uh, it usually means they have the same quality of service requirements. If they're associated with different TCONs, it would mean different 
one of your service requirements. An ONU is, a social, is identified by an ONU ID, a TCOT by an ALLOC ID, ALLOC stands for allocation, and a port by a port ID. Uh, regarding the control messages, the activity on the GPON on the PON, and this means the activity between the OLT and the ONUs, is controlled by two types of messages. The first type is called physical layer OAM, PLO. OAM stands for Operation Administration and Maintenance. Uh, this supports the basic functions of GPON, like activating an ONU, uh, establishing the channel for OMCI, which is what we'll talk about next, encryption, uh, key management, and so on. It is transported in the PLOM header, in the header of the frame. It's 13 bytes of GBON. Uh, and the details of exactly what the, the messages are and how they are, um, how they're transmitted and what the fields mean is specified in G984.3 again. Uh, there's a different type of messages called OMCI. OMCI, by the way, is common to GPON and also to more advanced technologies. Uh, they're transported over a dedicated GEM channel, or in other words, a dedicated GEM port. Uh, there's a transport mechanism which is defined in the same channel, in the same standard. Uh, but the syntax of the OMCI is a totally separate standard. Uh, this is a very wide standard. It controls uh, a lot of functionalities such as uh, discovery of the ONU's hardware capabilities, um, update of software, uh, configuration of services, and so on. Now, talking about services, uh, GBON can deliver different kinds of services, and some examples are voice calls, internet browsing, emails, gaming, video conferencing, broadcast video. Uh, in addition, GBON can service backhaul for mobile networks. So if you have your antennas with the base stations, very often they will be backhauled by GPON. Means fiber will be connecting them to some central location. Now, uh, these are all common services that we get today from our service providers. Now, what makes GPON suitable for delivering all these services? If we look at the requirements of different services, um, let's look at four characteristics throughput, delay, jitter, and packet loss rate. You can see that there are different requirements for different services. For example, if you take emails, the throughput is usually not very high. Uh, delay is not very important. If you get your email a few seconds later, it won't make a big difference. Jitter is also not very important. You may get one email sooner and another email later. As long as you get them, it doesn't really matter. And packet loss rate, well, you don't want to, loss pa to lose packets, but uh, often there are retransmission mechanisms that allow you to receive them at the end. Uh, take voice as another example. Here the throughput is not very high, but it's very sensitive to delay, jitter, and packet loss because these will affect the quality of your voice call. Um, take broadcast video. Similar to voice in jitter and packet loss requirements, uh, delay is important in one direction, which is the downstream. Uh, where you get the video, uh, throughput is much higher than voice. Okay, so this way you can see that there are different services that have different requirements, and GPON has the quality of service mechanisms to control this. Okay, uh, you can see more about this and other subjects in our website. We have dedicated webinars on some subjects, so you can go to tracepan.com category webinars and watch them. You can learn more about our company in tracepan.com or contact us at info at tracepan.com. If you liked our video, like it, and you're welcome to subscribe to our channel. Thank you.